Okay, so deferred payment price. Again, folks, it's the actual amount of money that you're paying for an item. So how, how do you add up all the money that you spent on something? Well, one way is to just add up the money. Okay, so when you're buying something, what's the first thing that you do? If you're borrowing to do it, you give them the down payment, and then you add in the total monthly payments, right? This is a, a more traditional way of calculating deferred payment price because it's following the money, right? These are all payments when you're buying something. Right? You give them a certain amount down, and then you're going to write a check every month to send to them, and that the total of all of that, that's going to be how much you paid, right? The other way that you can calculate it, when you're buying something, the first thing you have to pay for is the price, right? If you're buying a $28,000 car, you are definitely going to pay at least $28,000, right? Well, you're going to pay the price. What else do you have to pay for? Yeah, and what do we call the interest, folks? We can't say that word. That's swearing. <laughs> Plus the finance charge. So one of the things I'm going to... I'm going to task you with in this class this the next two weeks is to never say the word interest anymore. You're always going to have to say finance charge to get used to it, right? So now we have to say the F word. Yes, exactly, right? You must cuss in this class. Or no, you must not cuss in this class. And therefore, saying the F word is actually what you're supposed to do instead of saying interest, right? Interest is now something that's taboo. We cannot say it. Anytime you do that, you have to, anytime you say the word interest, you've got to go to the bathroom and wash your mouth out with soap. Okay. So, <laughs> all right. So, um, those are sort of the four standard things, and then of course the very last piece that that you should really care about. Right? This should look slightly familiar. APR, which is sort of the lending side of the investing term APY. Annual percentage rate. Yeah, annual percentage rate. And again, this is the interest rate that you're paying if you convert it into simple interest rates on a per yearly basis, okay? So, I am going to show you when we get into an example how to find this using the tables in your pamphlet of practical business math procedure tables, okay? So we'll play around with this some more. These will also help us calculate loan payments and whatnot, all right? And then of course, technically I didn't, this is obvious, but I'm gonna write it down just to be safe. One of the other things about it, any kind of financing that you're gonna to have to do is, is what's gonna be your monthly payment. And, how would you define the monthly payment? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the amount you pay each month, right? I mean, it's, it's it's obvious, but at the same time, I'm going to write it down just to be safe, all right? Amount you pay each month, and this can be calculated two separate ways, folks. Okay. As two methods are to be calculated. One is to use a formula, and this is only if you have all of this information in front of you, okay? So, your monthly payment. Price, well, it's even easier than that, right? Yeah. It's amount financed. Amount financed. Plus finance charge. Divided 
divided by the number of monthly payments, depending on how much, how long you borrow the money for. Okay, folks. So the amount financed is how much you're borrowing. The finance charge is the interest that you owe. And now I must go wash my mouth. I was so. And then you're going to divide that evenly by however many months you're going to take to pay it off. Right. I mean that that. Basically, what that's saying is you're going to owe a certain amount of money. That's what the top piece is. You owe the interest and the, and the amount you borrowed. And the number below is just how evenly you're going to divide it. If you're going to pay it off in a year, you divide it by 12. If you're going to pay it off in four years, you divide it by 48, right? So. Do any of the numbers change if you were to make more than one payment a month? Yes. That's, we are not going to go I'm into. Going to go there. We're not going to go there. I'm going to show you how you can look for that and, and deal with that on a, on a per loan basis. But for this particular class's cases, you're always going to be paying the same amount every month. Okay? And we're not even going to talk about cases or have any homework problems where <clears throat> you'll change your payment amount. Mm -hmm. We'll just keep it nice and fixed all the time so it's relatively straightforward. Okay? If you don't have all of that information, the amount financed and the finance charge and the number of monthly payments, then you go back to the tables and we'll learn how to use tables to calculate the monthly payment. Okay. So note there are two, two places where we'll be using the tables. One is to calculate the APR. The other is to calculate the monthly payment, depending on which one we have. All right. So these six pieces of information are basically the guts that I will ask you about any kind of lending situation we get ourselves into. All right. Some of these I will give to you. Some of them you will have to calculate. You just have to be able to maneuver through the different cases, OK? Not bad? All right, so let's do a couple of them, right? Uh, let's see. So let's suppose that I, uh, I buy a, what should I buy? Um, let's keep it simple. I'm going to buy a $15,000 used tractor. And this is very used because a track doesn't cost anywhere near $15,000 anymore. So this is something that's made in the mid-1900s, 60s, 70s would be my guess. You can probably get one of those for, for 15 grand. Um, do realize that tractors are one of the few vehicles that were made to actually last, at least the old ones, right? If you, if you have a, a tractor made between 1960 and 1985, it will last longer than you will, period. Okay? I mean, they're all mechanical. There's very little electronic in it. You can take the whole bloody thing apart, put it all the way back together, have 18 screws and bolts laying off the side. The thing will still run like a charm. Right? Parts for different cars and everything. Of else. course. Yeah, I mean, that's, <laughs> tractors are awesome, folks. If you want to travel, you should use a tractor. You are safe. I thought about it, dude. <laughs> you know, I was stuck in Colorado. I, really <laughs> I could go buy a 12 grand track. And you know you could sell it for 12 grand when you get yeah, back home, too. It would just take you take two you weeks to get home. home. <laughs> 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 all right, let's see. So, um, all right, so uh, how much did I put down? All right, so I had to put 10% down. So I put $1,500 down. Note that sometimes I will give you a percentage of the price, and sometimes I'll actually give you a number. Just adjust. You should know how to calculate 10% of something or 20% or whatever. The, at this stage, I'm not even going to necessarily test you on it, but I will ask those sorts of questions. All right? And finance the rest. For, let's suppose I said uh, three years. Years, I swear. It looks like yarns. All right. I agree to pay a six hundred dollar finance charge. So this is an old school type of method to buy a, a vehicle, right? You don't haggle about interest rates. You just say, you know, you're going to talk to a farmer. He's trying to sell this tractor. You agree to give him 1500 bucks, and he says, yeah, you know, if you can't give me the $15,000 in cash, that's perfectly fine. For every year that you borrow the money, you owe me an extra 200 bucks. That was exactly what he said. And, and 
reasonable sort of thing, right? So in, in this case, you said, oh, well, I need, to, I need three years to pay it off. And he's like, fine, that'll be an extra 600. That's how it works, okay? Okay. And that, that's actually how my wife's father bought and sold all of his tractors growing up. They didn't go through banks. It was all a gentleman's handshake. And it was just, you, you gave him the tractor and then the money traded hands back and forth. There was no tax man. There was no licensing. There was no who owns this sort of thing. And, and a lot of times tractors would trade hands when the tax man was coming around because you get taxed based on the amount of vehicles you own on your property. Yada, yada. Farmers weren't stupid, right? I mean, we pretend that they're these not smart people because there are farmers and they're out there just in the dirt playing around. I'm like, no. They're sly folks, man. They know when to hide the tractor when they need to, right? So this is what my father-in-law was doing for a good 50 or 20 years as a farmer. He was just a hobby farmer, too. He was actually working for the state most of the time. But he had farm income, and he knew how to. He and his brother and his, his uncle actually shared vehicles regularly. <clears throat> it was, I, I didn't ask him about it, because it's one of those where if you know, then, then you're then you know, right? Because then it's then you, you're in on the accomplice. Yes, essentially, yes. Right. So, so I don't know what really happened. I just know that it happened. That's all I can say. Okay. So this is the loan that we have set up. We've done a gentleman's agreement. Maybe we had a piece of paper that we both put an X on because we don't know how to sign our names, whatever. And so now we go ahead and move forward, right? So my question to you is, what are all of the standard things? Okay. So what was the first thing that I said we needed to know? Down payment. How much should we put down on this particular tractor, folks? Why? Yeah. That's, that's, what I <laughs> that's what I said, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's all I had on hand, right? All right, so part two is how much did I borrow? Second, what was the third thing that we needed? Finance charge. Finance charge. What was the finance charge in this instance, folks? Why? Because that's what we agreed on. Right? <laughs> we said it was going to be 200 bucks for every year. We're going to do this in three years. Therefore, it's a $600 finance charge. So this is, and this is how it works, folks. Some of these answers will be part of the reading, and as long as you read the problem correctly, you should be able to answer questions and get three points. Please take them as needed. All right. All right. So, what was number four? Time. Deferred payment for And what is the deferred payment price again, folks? Mount finance plus finance charge. Well, that's that's to figure out the monthly payments. Down payment oh, okay. plus total monthly. Payments. Down payment plus total monthly payments. Do we know what our monthly payment is yet? No. Oh shit. Okay. How do we do this then? <laughs> don't forget the multiple ways to calculate the deferred payment price. Right. If you don't have the information for new one of them, use the other. Right. So in this case, it's price plus. Finance charge. What was the price of the tractor? Fifteen thousand. How much financing was I going to pay? Six hundred bucks. Technically, how much is this tractor going to cost me? Fifteen thousand six hundred. Right. Fifteen thousand that he agreed to sell it to me at, plus the six hundred dollars extra that he's going to charge me because I'm going to take three years to pay him. Okay. And I like these, this, this initial example because it, it's a, a little bit more obvious about where these numbers come from. Right? When we start getting into regular loans, then we'll have to do all this calculation crap to do it. And you'll forget what the basic meaning is. Here, the basic meaning is pretty straightforward. All right? so, so, what was number five? 
APR. Okay, so, folks, now you got to go to your tables. And I apologize for this portion of the class right away. Because you need to turn to the tables that are titled APR. So go past all of the tables that we've worked up and with up until now, right? So get past page 36. And keep going until you get to the to the uh, page that's titled APR or annual percentage rate. And you'll see right away why I'm apologizing. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you couldn't read the page and just kept going, that's why, okay? The APR table, folks, is always written in this size font. Even if you go look for it on the internet, folks, this is the size font it's going to be, okay? This is just the way they, it's, it's just the way it gets printed, all right? If you need to bring a magnifying glass with you on the on the test, I, I recommend it. This, this yeah. <laughs> 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 Sorry, he's going. <laughs> that is awesome. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> so the way you use this table is basically by following the directions along the top, right? So what does it say right underneath all the percentages down along the bottom? Finance charge for $100 of a month finance. Finance charge per $100 of amount financed. So, the way we do it, then, is we're going to use a calculation, right? So it's the amount financed per, oh no, sorry, finance charge per amount financed. Let's write that, reverse it. Finance charge per amount financed. So you divide by the amount financed. And then the $100 is a tack along at the end that you multiply by. Okay? So this is the formula that you will generally use to get what your APR is in the table. Take your finance charge, divide by your amount financed, and then multiply by 100, and then find this number. Find this number, find closest number in the table row that you are working with. Okay? So this is a little bit backwards, folks. We're going to calculate a number. Instead of using the table to calculate a value, we actually calculate a value that we're going to try and look for in the table, which is why this one is a little bit weird. Okay? Welcome to the way it works, folks. <laughs> All right, so in this case, what was our finance charge? 600 bucks. How much did we finance? 13,500. 13, so get out your calculators, take 600, divide by 13,500, then don't forget to multiply by 100. 4.4. 4.4444444. Note, folks, if you look on the table, what do all the numbers get rounded to? Two decimals. You will do the same thing here, okay? Round to two decimals. Okay? So this is essentially 4.44, all right? Because the number after the 4 is a 4, we round the 4 down, okay? Now, this is where it gets weird, okay? We are looking for this number in the tables. Now, the, the where you go on the tables to look is the row that represents the number of monthly payments you are going to pay off this loan in, okay? <laughs> so in other words, if we're paying this off in three years, how many months is it going to take? 36. So you guys go to row 36. And what you do is you move to the right until you get to the number, the numbers, that these are in between. Okay? So give me the number that is just bigger than this and the number that is just smaller than this. 4.30 and 
The way you are supposed to do this, folks, is to look for which one of those numbers is closer to 4.44. How far is this one away? Uh, 14. By 14, how far is this one away? 25, 25. obviously which one's closer? <laughs> closer. And then you figure out what the interest rate is by going from that number all the way up to your percentage. So go to the top from 4.30. 2.75%. That's what interest rate you're paying to this particular farmer. That's how it works, okay? And note, the reason why the percentages go by 0.25%, folks, is by law. The government forces you, when you are lending money, to round to at least the closest quarter of a percent, okay? So that's why the tables will all be by quarters of percents. You can round this number closer than a quarter of a percent. You need a different table to do it, but you can, but that's not required, okay? The, the Fed said, hey banks, you must round to the nearest quarter of a percent, and this is how you do it, okay? And, and again, this is actually probably not all that far from a loan that I have you know, witnessed farmers making on the side, right? Because 2.75%, that's a reasonable interest rate, and again, it's not exorbitant, right? You're not making them chew off their arm and give it to you at the end of a three-year loan, right? So, yeah, not a bad setup, all right? Now, the last thing. What's the last thing that we need to do? Folks, use the formula to calculate the monthly payments. I'll show you how to use the tables in the next example. So what is the formula that method for calculating the monthly payment? Well, finance plus finance charge. Here you go. Zach. So how much should we borrow? $13,500. How much interest are we going to pay? Sorry. $600. Bucks. How many months are we going to pay this off in? 36. So divide that number by 36. Right? So, and that should make sense to you, right? If you owe somebody $14,100 and have 36 months to pay it off, just divide it and there you go. Thirteen thousand five hundred and sixteen dollars and sixty-seven cents. Mm -hmm. Did I do that right? Nope. Thirteen five plus six hundred divided by thirty-six, right? You need to do this in parentheses. Mm -hmm. Three ninety-one point six seven. So in theory, we'll be paying this guy just a hair short of 400 bucks a month to own this tractor <coughs> officially in three years, okay? And that's a reasonable kind of agreement to have, to, to, to exist. You know, this is pre-1980s, really, folks. After 1980, you couldn't get away with that because they actually started having licensing on vehicles. The government actually went looking for VIN numbers. I know, it's <laughs> Yeah, uh-huh. But yeah, you find a tractor that's pre-1980, it won't even have a vehicle identification number, right? I mean, those are the best, right? Those you can, you can maneuver as you see fit. <coughs> cool thing about my, my uncle and nephew is that they actually have two farms, one just in Iowa and the other one just in Missouri. Mm -hmm. And so, oh yeah, constantly <laughs> moving the tractors back and forth when needed. <laughs> when the Iowa tax man comes in, it's like, don't you have more taxes? No, no, no. That's all in Missouri. Sorry, man. Because <laughs> they're, yeah, they're, again, sneaky little boogers. Okay. So, not too bad. Huh. Okay. Again, 
and that's a that's a gentleman loan. Okay, those don't really like I said, those don't really happen all that much anymore. So it's kind of a bummer. But yeah, it does sort of give you a, a nice outline of how we have to go about doing this. So let's do one that's a little bit more traditional, right? So let's suppose that um, I buy a what uh, twenty five thousand dollar car. We took my two thousand seven. Honda Civic to the car shop the other day. It's got 250,000 miles on it because I've been driving it here for 10 years. So, car's probably worth about maybe 1,500, 2,000 bucks. The guy's like, yeah, it'll be about a $1,500 repair. That's why I'm doing this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let's suppose that I put 20% uh, down Financed the rest for uh, five years at, um, let's suppose that I don't have that good credit, so let's suppose that it was at 8%. Okay. Um, now, the first thing I'm going to tell you, and you're going to go, ah, thank goodness right away, is that the only time you use this table with a really, really, really small font, the only time is when you're looking to calculate the interest rate, okay? I gave you the interest rate, therefore you do not need to use this table, okay? This is the only thing this table is used for, okay? So the only time you will ever look at this really, 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 really small font is when someone asks you, what's the APR, okay? So, since I've given you the 8% interest rate, we are not going to use this table. We will use a different table later in the table's book, okay? But before we get there, let's do the beginning part of this problem, okay? How much did I put down, folks? And how did you figure out 5,000? 25,000 times 0 0.20. I gave him five grand up front, okay? So, if I give them $5,000, how much should I borrow? And again, please remember, it's amount financed, because you don't say the word borrow. So we're borrowing twenty thousand bucks. Yikes. Now technically what's number three? Finance charge. Did I give you the finance charge? No. You now know how much you're borrowing, but do you know how much you're paying? Not yet, right? We haven't figured that out. Okay, so technically, folks, normally what number three is, if you don't know it, it's the monthly payment, okay? In a gentleman's agreement, that's the very last thing you, you calculate. When you're going to a bank or, a, or a, a lending agency, you get to the monthly payment much faster. So we're going to go a little bit early. And folks, you're going to use the tables to do this. The way you, the tables you will use, and you'll be happy when I say this, the table you use to calculate this is on page 45 of the tables, literally page 45. And what do you notice about page 45? Amortization. Read it. <laughs> Amortization table, blah, 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 blah. What's the next page? The last page. Note, folks. These are the last tables you will use out of this table book, okay? Okay, so the idea here, folks, is that you use this monthly payment exactly the way the title says. It says monthly payment per $1,000 to pay principal and interest, okay? We are going to pay principal and interest because we're paying 8%. So what you're going to do is say, okay, take the amount financed, no, it's per $1,000. So what am I going to do? Divide by $1,000. And then you multiply by the 
table entry. And it kind of goes back to the way we expected tables to work in this tables book anyways. Okay, so the really only weird wacko table is that stupid APR table that you can't read. And again, I will apologize for that table again. And I will do that for the next two weeks. <laughs> Just so that you know. <laughs> so in this case, how much did I find it? 20,000. Divide that number by 1,000. Now, table entry, folks. What's my interest rate? 8%. So go to the 8% column, and then all you have to do is go down as far as the number of months you're going to take to pay it off. How many months am I going to take? 60, because I said five years. So what's the table entry at the very bottom? 20.28. 20.28. And that's all there is to it, folks. Okay. So just a hair over 400 bucks per month to buy my $25,000 car that I put five grand down with first. And that's an 8% interest rate, folks. So that, you know. Again, $25,000 car is probably used, which is sad. <laughs> Given today's day and age, if you want a car that's reasonable, it, it costs you. That's part of life. All right, sorry. I'm just <laughs> contemplating my own reality. Sometimes it sucks. Okay, so now getting back on track, folks. Now that we have the monthly payment, now we can calculate finance charge. How much interest am I going to pay, folks? And I'm sorry for cussing. Again, amount you borrowed minus the amount you paid, or well, strike that reverse. The amount you paid minus the amount you borrowed, right? So how much am I going to pay for my financing? Well, that's how much I borrowed. How much am I going to pay? How'd you figure that out? Well, I went 405, 60 times 60. 405, 60 times 60. Why did you do that, Steve? Well, because it's per month, so the length of the loan is 60 months, so... There you go. Tell me what yep. my final... This is how much you actually are going to pay for the financing, right? You're going to pay 40560 for 60 months. Again, that's... It's the sort of thing where once you stop and think about it, you're like, oh yeah, duh. Mm -hmm. Right? And then you borrow the 20000 So that's how much you borrowed. The amount you pay minus the amount you borrowed is the interest. So technically, what's the interest? Straight up. Mm -hmm. Straight up. And yes, folks, this is why car dealerships got into the lending agency business. They probably made about between five hundred and a thousand dollars for selling you the car, and then made four thousand dollars for financing you the car. <laughs> yeah, and well, I mean, there's going to be, you know, if it's used, they might have made it already twice. <laughs> <laughs> not, not uncommon for a same dealer to buy back a car they already sold. All right. All right, but this is a good, good example of about how much you pay on an interest loan, right, folks? It's not, it's not exorbitant, but yeah, you're you're paying it, right? It's a part of life. And how much did I really pay for this car? How did you do that? I added that on to 25. All right, good. So remember that the easiest way to do it is usually price plus finance charge. Just make sure that you add it to the price, not to the amount financed, right? That tends to be the minor mistake that students sometimes make is that they'll say, oh, it's 20,000 plus 4,336, which would be silly because the car was $25,000 and you paid less than that for it. That would be weird. 
So really, I'm basically paying 30 grand for this $25,000 car. How else would you calculate the deferred payment price? What's the other way? Down payment plus total monthly. What was my down payment, Dimitri? Five. Five thousand. What was my total in monthly? Whatever that number worked out to be, 405, 60 times 60. And what number did that equal? 25,336. Oh, the total? Yeah, plus. The same number, right? And that's the whole point. These are your checking mechanism, folks. If you want to check if you did these things correctly, this is how you do it. Right. You make sure that price plus finance is the same as down payment plus monthly payment. It's just a nice quick check that you can do too. All right. And obviously the sixth one, which is what's the APR, you know because it gave it to you, it's eight percent. Right. When you're given the interest rate. You will be asked to calculate the monthly payment. When you're given the monthly payment, you will be asked to calculate the APR. Those are sort of the two that go back and forth. Okay. That's how it works, though, folks. I mean, this is how they'll figure out how much you're going to have to pay per month in a loan when you go in and negotiate, right? And you, you go back and forth, right? You haggle how much you're going to put down. You haggle how many months you want to borrow, and then you say, okay, and then. Based on the interest rate for how long you borrow, that's what you're going to wind up paying. Right? And please note that if you haggle to get more time, they will jack up the interest rate, period. Okay? If you want a seven-year loan, you're not going to get something for 2%. Okay? They're going to charge you 4 5 or 6 If you pay it off in three years, that's when you can get a 2 or 3 or 4% loan, a nice cheap loan, because you're paying it off faster. Right? Banks will. Banks and lending agencies want the money sooner because then they guarantee the profit as opposed to deferring it. And it's scary if you think about it, right? How long does it, do we actually keep our cars after we buy them, folks? Totally not. Uh, the average, average, average time to hold a car is somewhere between five and six and a half years. That's all. Yeah, that's the average length that an American keeps their car. So if you've got a seven-year loan, you're dumping the car before you've even finished paying off the car. Yeah, that's just stupid. Chapter 12 and 13. <laughs> 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 Doing some bankruptcy. There's a lot of that going on, too. All right, but anyways, that, that's... I, I, I haven't quite analyzed it well enough to really understand how they're getting away with it, but they're doing it. Oh, actually, I was talking about Chapter 12. <laughs> 13, so you can like remember we were talking about is oh. by the time you get done paying your car you can actually afford the other car right uh huh yeah Point. but still you know, <laughs> not, not this way not this mode okay <laughs> <laughs> all right all right let's see um, there might be more in accounting fund rentals <laughs> all right let's, let's try one more but that one's the classic one folks there it's sort of cal given an interest rate calculating monthly and deferred and all that other business all right so here's another one right let's suppose that um, I buy a, uh, a a furniture set for six thousand bucks. Uh, I put I suppose I put five hundred dollars down and agreed to pay. Uh, let's see. Relatively decent number. Uh, 250 bucks a month. $250 per month for two years. I think that works. It's 
250 times 24 is 6,000, right? Okay. Cool. All right, so standard, standard methods, folks. How much did I put down? 500 bucks, good. How much did I borrow? Technically, folks, what's my monthly payment? Because we agree, right? Think of this as sort of the semi layaway plan, except it's an inverted layaway plan. What's the finance charge? How'd you figure that out? Monty <laughs> finance divided by a thousand times the table entry. Oh, this is finance charge. The inverse is out, right? Yeah. How much am I paying for this couch set? Right? Six thousand. Sixty five. What are my monthly payments? 24 times 250, 6,000, minus however much I was borrowing. Total pay minus a little borrow. How much am I actually paying for the couches? thousand dollars for the couches, five hundred dollars for the financing. And then last but not least, since I gave you the monthly payment folks, you actually have to calculate the APR. Okay? So we gotta go back to that table one more time because it's weird. Now what did we do to calculate the APR? Again, what I like to try and do is to, is to have you guys read the table to remember how to actually calculate it, right? It's finance charge per $100 of amount financed. So it's finance charge per amount financed times 100, okay? Again, you are more than welcome to write that down on a note card. But really, you shouldn't need to. You should be able to read that title and say, oh, yeah, I know what that means. All right? So what was my finance charge? 500 bucks. Technically, how much did I borrow? $5,500. Multiply that by 100, round to the 100s. Table. How do we use the table? What do we do? Where do I go? What plan am I on? Right, we're playing it off in two years, folks. So use row 24 on the tables. And you're looking for 9.09. If you don't see it on the first page, keep flipping. Okay? The whole idea is that the numbers keep making, getting bigger the further you go along the table. 8.5, and what's the one above it? Oh. <laughs> 24. Oh. 
So what's the number that's just below it? Oh, there's exactly 9.09. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice when it works exactly, right? <laughs> so there are times when it will work exactly. Be happy that it's obviously whatever is in that particular column. So go up from 9.09. .09. Sorry, what was that again? That was the 8.5%. So we're going to be paying 8.5% APR on this couch loan. doesn't always work like that, folks. And it's actually in the table, but it's nice when it does, because then you don't have to do any guessing. You just, I'm there. Okay? Not bad? Should we do one more to be safe and then, and then move on to credit cards? Okay. Okay, so let's do one more where I give you the APR itself, okay? Crazy one. What? <laughs> Some kind of crazy one they have on the test. <laughs> <laughs> These are all about as crazy as it gets for the test. Okay. This, is, right on. this is kind of how it goes. Do note, folks, that on the test I'm going to only ask you for one of the values that I'm that I'm cranking out here, folks, right? So I may ask you a question and say, you know, tell me what's the total interest I pay for this, or tell me what's the total of cost that I spend on this particular item, right? So you're going to have to remember what do each one of those items need in a real loan situation, right? <coughs> so let's buy, suppose that I buy, okay, so we bought a car, we bought a tractor, so what else do we need? Houses. <laughs> Houses or mortgages, that's, that's next that's chapter. Yeah. That's the next chapter, okay? So we're going to buy a boat. Um, what's boat cost? $27,325. I'm cutting you off at reality here. No, no tens and dollars. God, that makes it hard work. Okay, so um, how much do I have to put down? Well, let's say I had to put 12% uh, down. You want it weird? There, there's weird, okay? I put 12% down and financed the rest at, uh, I have bad credit, guys, so it's, this is going to be painful. Let's suppose we do it at 9% over, let's go, four years. So, ugh. and again, this is, this is a very testable question, folks. <coughs> and then the, the question the, that the, the test would ask would be one of the specific questions. It might, it might be, you know, what's the finance charge for this loan? Or what's the, you know, what's the deferred payment price for this loan? What, just one of the pieces of all the different things that we're calculating, okay? So, hmm? how much did we put down? Three thousand two hundred seventy-six. How'd you get? How'd you get that? Uh, Twenty-seven three hundred times point one two. That's right. What was that number again? Um, Three thousand two hundred seventy-six. Three thousand two hundred seventy-six. Oh, what a lovely down payment. <laughs> so, how much did I borrow, folks? So what's going to be my monthly payment for this boat, folks? First off, which table do we use to calculate the monthly payment? Do not use the APR table, right? Turn away from the I can't read it. <laughs> Essentially go to the last page, second to last page. <laughs> 
And note, note the difference between the top tables and the bottom tables, folks. What are the top tables loans in terms of? Months. What are the bottom table in terms of? Yes. Guess which tables we're going to use in chapter 14 or chapter 15? Years. Years. Uh -huh. that, that's the mortgage table. That the above table is the car, boat, tractor table. And apparently couches. <clears throat> So what do I do to figure out my monthly payment? Go to your 9%, 48 months, uh -huh. so it's 24.77. 24.77. Now what am I going to do with that number? Multiply by amount financed, 24,024 per $1,000 divided by 1,000. Okay? So don't forget the divided by 1,000 piece. Of course, this is why I don't own a boat. Five ninety five oh seven. Okay, I've got another $600 monthly payment. <laughs> yeah. Still got a real spending issue. That, this is why this chapter is, is mildly annoying, folks, because all you're doing is spending, 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 right? Well, I got that down. <laughs> So how much did I really pay for this uh, boat, folks? What's the deferred payment price? Oh, technically, what do I calculate first? Sorry, I was skipping a piece. You can calculate that if you want, but... What's the finance charge? How much interest am I paying? How'd you get it? Remember that it's 48 payments because I'm doing it in four years. And what'd you subtract me to? Make sure you subtract the amount financed, not the price. Sorry, what did that work out to be? $4,539.36. cents, you said? Yeah. Again, interest, interest, interest. Free money for the banks. We love bags. Go team. <laughs> Your enthusiasm is underwhelming. Yes, it is. <laughs> and so then how much are we really paying for this boat? Well, what did I say the price was? 27300 something? Plus the 45, 39, 36. 31, 39, 36. 31, 8, 39, 36. Yeah. You're going to buy a boat. Get one of those $200 dinghies that you can just, you know, pay somebody in cash with oars and shh. Although it is really cool to be carrying, you know, to dragging the boat behind your Prius. Oh wait, that doesn't work so well. <laughs> Maybe you should drag the Prius behind the boat. Yeah, practically. <laughs> All right, so not too bad then. All right, so this is about half of chapter 14. So we, we can we can almost crank out the credit cards, but not quite. So first off, folks, why are credit cards considered a loan? You're not paying right off the bat, and you're most likely being charged with interest. True, but technically, if you you know, what's the good thing about credit cards? Yeah. 
Exactly. And technically, it's <laughs> still going to be your money. But if you pay the credit card in full every month, yeah, right? I mean, this is the attraction of credit cards, right? This is it. Technically, it's an interest free loan as long as you pay in full and on time each period. Please note that technically credit card payments, folks, they call them monthly payments, but they're really not determined on a per monthly basis. It usually is on a per monthly basis, and most credit cards try to keep it once a month, but they can cut the number of days in your billing cycle whenever they want to. They can actually change the number of days in your billing cycle to whatever days are most convenient for them. Um, when I when I finished the first couple of years of my graduate career back in the 1990s, uh, one of my friends took a job with Bank of America out in the East Coast in New York. And they paid him a quarter of a million dollars a year to basically determine when to send people their credit card statements. And what my friend wrote, what, what he had in his contract, on top of the quarter million dollars in base salary, which a quarter million dollars in New York folks is like nothing, okay? Rent in New York is like six to seven thousand dollars a month, right? So, so a quarter million bucks is really nothing. But what he had written into his contract was, for every interest payment that anyone in their in, in Bank of America had to pay in his you know sort of district, he got two percent of it. All right, and you wouldn't think, right, that two percent of of interest payments, right? If you think about interest payments in the credit card company. In the 90s, we didn't really think about it too terribly much. And so, for the most part, he didn't think he was going to make a whole lot of extra money. He was wildly wrong. His first year's annual salary was 1.5 million bucks. He made a quarter million up front and 1.25 million in bonus interest payments. And that's 2% of what Bank of America collected in his little mini region, which was like three states in the upper northeast. Like New Jersey, New York, and New Hampshire, or something like that. Three states. Think about that, right? 1.25 million is 2% of what, folks? Oh, <laughs> and that's, those were three small states. <laughs> I went and visited him one week while while you know while I was in graduate school, like after his second year of working there. 25 minutes after I got there, I don't remember anything we did for the rest of the week. He rented an entire flat in, a, in an apartment building. It probably cost him twenty grand a month, would be my guess. And stuff happened that I have no idea. If there's if there's video, I could never run for office because I'm sure we were doing things that were. Good. <laughs> I literally don't remember it at all. It was a great week. I just remember waking up on the airplane, going, "Am I there yet?" And somebody said, no, we've got an hour to go. I said, ugh. And then I passed out again. And it, it was a week <coughs> straight of debauchery. 1990s debauchery, too. Yeah. It was good. <laughs> <laughs> 90s were good. Yeah, this is back when money was free and so was a lot of other stuff. So anyways. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so obviously, folks, if you do not pay in full and you do not pay on time, what does the credit card company do? You pay interest, but guess what? They don't call it interest. Guess what they call it? A finance charge. Hey, go figure. Guess where the car loans got it from, folks? Or vice versa. I don't know exactly who came first. All right, you, you pay a finance charge. Whenever either of those does not happen. So either you pay late or you do not pay in full. And folks, it doesn't matter. Even if you pay one penny short, you pay the entire interest for that month that you owe. That's how it works. Okay? You agreed to that in the small print. You didn't read it, but it was there. All right? 
Now, here's the, here's the kicker, though. Guess how they have to calculate their finance charge slash interest? This is, what, this is what's bizarre. It's actually calculated using simple interest. That's how they do it. It's good old I equals PRT. Okay? P, folks, P is slightly weird, so you have to bear <coughs> with me. Average daily balance for your billing period. We'll talk about that in a little bit. R, guess what R is? Yeah, it's the rate. It's whatever the rate is on the card, right? So if you're paying 9.9 percent, .9%, it's 9.9 percent. Mm -hmm. Rate on card. And please remember that you must convert the percent to a decimal. And T, they can't do anything fancy with T, folks. It's the number of days in the billing cycle. Over 365. They have to use exact days, period. Note that this is slightly different than the way the book presents it. The book tries to present credit cards as a monthly billing entity, and they use one twelfth. That is against the rules nowadays, folks. That's old. The newest rules that banks were thrown under, or lending agencies that have credit card companies inside of them, they must use days in the billing cycle divided by three hundred and sixty-five. Period. Okay. And no, no banker days. Nope. None of them can do it anymore. That was totally outlawed back in the late nineties. That's why my friend quit that job about 96. That night, I think his nose was hurting. So was his liver. He probably had so many <coughs> other types of issues. Or <laughs> <laughs> diseases. I, I don't want to know. He went to clean living after that, folks. Granted, I guarantee you that he made, the three years he lived, he, he worked there, but he, he made probably 10 million bucks in my house. So it, he's not hurt. Well, it might in the mornings, but you know, there's a bill that fixes it later on. All right, so anyways, that's the cool thing about, about the interest on the credit card, folks, is that really, it's just PRT. I mean, it really is, okay? It's not anything fancy. It's straight, simple interest, okay? Now, the funky thing is average daily balance. So we've got about enough time to do a really simple example, and then we'll call it a day and finish this up on Wednesday, okay? So... How do you find ADD? How do you find ADB? Average daily balance. Please note, folks, that this is all a credit card company has to show you on its statement is this three letter phrase, ADB. You're supposed to know what that means. It means average daily balance. And it's basically the P in I equals PRT. Okay? Alright, so let's do a really simple example, right? So let's suppose that we have a 30-day billing cycle. So it's a nice classic one-month billing cycle, right? So you know, whatever. Nothing funky went on, so they didn't change the number of days, they just left it at 30. Alright? And the only thing you did with this credit card, right? So this is a nice new credit card, right? This is a new 9.9% credit card. Okay? And all you did was on the, the 20th day of the billing cycle, you christened this, this credit card by purchasing something, right? So on the 20th day of the billing cycle, you bought a $300 suit. Okay, that's it. All right? And so what I want us to do is to figure out what is the average daily balance for 
this billing cycle, right? You owe three hundred dollars, right? When you get your bill, it's three hundred bucks because the only thing you bought was the three hundred dollar suit on the twentieth day of the cycle. Now, whatever that date is, don't worry about it right now. We'll get to that in a little bit. So just work with it from here. All right. So first off, folks, what does this A stand for? Average. Average. How do we compute averages? Add the numbers up, divide by how many there are. Add up the numbers, divide by the number of numbers. Now, this is the average daily balance. How many days are in this billing cycle? 30. So how many numbers do I need to have? 30. 30. Good. Okay. So we need 30 numbers. We need 30 numbers to compute the average. So what is my first number? How much money did I borrow on the first day? Zero. Okay. That's your first number. How much money did I borrow on the second day? No. Okay, I'll do it one more time. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> now, how many days do we borrow zero dollars, folks? My 19th number is a zero. And then finally we get to the 20th day, folks. So how much money did I borrow on the 20th day? Okay, I got it. How much money did I borrow on the 21st day? None. Have well, I, 300 have I, because uh, you haven't paid it yet. I haven't paid for the oh. suit yet, so the 21st number is also $300. I don't, I'm not paying zero until I've paid it off, and I'm not going to pay it right away, right? Because I don't even remember that I bought the suit. <laughs> I just know sitting in my closet for the you know for the wedding I got to go to in three months, right? You know it's cheapest at this time of the year, so this is when you would got it. That's a five hundred dollars suit in three months. I have no idea. So I <laughs> all right. So better rent one for How much how much money may I borrow on the twenty second day? Okay, good. And how long does this last? Okay, so there are my 30 numbers, right? So now all you have to do is average them all. So, do it. And so I assume that you're going to get out of your calculator and go, zero plus zero plus zero. Plus. Well, you have to add up all the numbers, right? I mean, you can't not type all 30 numbers down, can you? Yeah, okay, good. Please use your math skills. Do not add a whole bunch of zeros. That would just be silly. But my question to you folks is how many zeros are there? Now, how many 300s are there? Thirty days. So how many do there have to be? At least ten. Well, yeah, true. There do have to be at least ten. But how many are there exactly? Eleven. Eleven. Because what's nineteen plus eleven? Thirty. Thirty. Right. Or think of it. This is what this is what tends to throw students off. From the twentieth to the thirtieth is how many days, folks? It's ten days, but that's where you don't include the starting point. Okay. And note, you did the same thing with this 19, right? From the 19th to the 1st, folks, what's 19 minus 1? 18. 18. Well, why did you guys say 19 then? Well, the reason why is because you know that to the 19th day there are 19 numbers. But the math behind it is the 19th minus the first is 18, add 1, 19 numbers. And likewise over here, what's 30 minus 20? 10 plus 1, 11. There are 11 300s, okay? So in other words, be a little bit cautious with that. It's one of those student mistakes that I see every now and then. I mean, it's natural to sort of do it, right? It's not like it's, it's, it's unnatural. But you've been doing it, right? I mean, from the 1st to the 19th, you, you said there were 19 days. 
But in theory, you should have said, well, no, 19 minus 1 is 18 if this is only 10, right? Same concept, all right? So, now we're ready. <coughs> Multiply, wait, I can't do multiplication. I have to add. Come on. Add 311 times. Add 311 times. <laughs> Thank God, that's so much better. And yes, since you know how to add 300. 11 times cleverly, you say, oh, yeah, uh-huh. So you have 3,300 total dollars that you borrowed over that month, in theory. How many days? So technically, folks, if I didn't pay my bill in full and the bank had to calculate how much interest I owed, they would use $110, not $300, okay? Which is fair if you think about it, right? Because did you borrow this $300 for the whole month? No. And it averages out to only being $110 over the entire month. Now, just for kicks and giggles, folks, how much interest does that wind up being if I didn't pay my bill in full? What would my finance charge be? It's good old I equals PRT, right? And P is this AB, ADB thing, right? What was the interest rate on my card? 9.9. Don't forget to convert. How many days were in my billing cycle? And remember, they have to use exact time. None of this bank is big crap. Right? Point nine zero, right? Ninety cents of interest, folks. That, that's how much interest you would owe if you didn't pay for this suit. All of it in the first month. This is how interest works, right? I mean, the nice part about it is that since it's one month, it's thirty over three sixty-five. That cuts the amount of interest you actually pay a lot, right? Notice that this is nowhere near the late fee charge, right? What's the late fee charge for an average credit card? Somewhere between 30 and 75 bucks. 90 cents? Yeah. If you have to pay interest, if you can't make your credit card payment, folks, at least pay the minimum amount on time. And then you'll pay a couple of bucks in interest, okay? But do not pay the 40 to $60 late fee. That's just stupid. Yeah, that's just blatantly stupid. If you ever have to pay a late fee on your credit card, you, you, you deserve it, okay? <laughs> If you have to pay a finance charge, ah, okay, you can push a, a credit card bill down a couple of months. I mean, don't go crazy, but the nice part about it is that it's a relatively reasonable loan, somewhere between 10 and 25%. You're not going to get that at a payday loan shop, right? Those guys charge you 300%. So, <clears throat> all right, so this gets you started. We'll do another example that's a, little, well, a couple more examples that are more complicated on Wednesday, and hopefully by then you will also get your tests back and we can go from there. Oh, come on. You guys all did good.